So now that this is the best bow for Keith, let's put it together. Oh, what yeah. do you think? All right. Stuff. Let's go. Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here at PodiumArcher.com with cameraman Keith from the Tech Videos. Keith decided on the Lift 29 and a half this year for his bow. Out, he tried all the, the four that we compared and broke it down. And I'm sure there's hate and venom in the bottom of that because somebody authentically just chose Matthews. Whatever. In any event, here we are. And Keith's never put a loop on and he's never tied a peep in. So we're gonna show him how to do it and have him do it himself. So first off, I'd grab the square there, Keith. Black plastic, yellow thing, there you go. Okay, so how this guy works, push that forward, bring it over here, hook it on your serving, and then you're gonna move this up and down to where it lines up with the bolt hole. Because everything we're gonna build on this bow is gonna be relatively square with the bolt hole. So that's where we wanna start from. Flip that back over. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's a longer, bolder lines there and there. Yes. I want you to draw a silver Sharpie where both of those are on like the outside of those lines. So. Like right, yep. Draw there and then do the other one. Okay, now we don't need this anymore. Now I'll silver that all the way around. Cool. Now we don't need the silver anymore. Set that down. So doing a, uh, a loop, you always do soft knots first. So I'll tie the upper one and then you're gonna to try to tie the lower one. So I pull off some serving material. About that much is probably good. I like to use 400 nylon, grab our handy dandy beeswax and wax the piss out of the serving material so when you let go of it, it stays taunt on the string. So you only gotta tie it tight and then stop and it will just hold itself. So what we're doing is, I call it a Dudley knot because that's the first time I really saw it, but it's a loop over like a regular knot and then do it again. And then pull it down to the silver mark there. And what it's we're gonna wanna- even silver mark there. Well, what we're gonna do here, we're actually gonna grab one of your arrows. Okay. Um, grab one, if I don't know where they are, but grab one of those because we wanna pay attention to the knock width. Because we wanna end up with that edge of that lower mark where the bottom of your arrow is. Because that lower mark is square to the bottom of the bolt hole. So we want this width to have a little bit of give in there. And that looks like just enough. So we definitely want to make sure when we tie that lower knot, you still have that little bit of black in between there. Okay. And this is as, as low as we want to go on this. So now that if we tie this out, we're going to go this direction with it. But this gap has to be able to move up and down a little bit. Because when you draw the bow back to full draw, it actually arcs just a little bit. And that gap will get a little shorter. And if you don't do that, it'll pinch and your arrow will float when you draw it back. So that's a perfect starting point, and as long as we cover the silver but no more up, we'll be great. Okay. So that's all we needed that for. Okay. All right, so now we did that knot above, and then we do the same thing below. So just one through, two through. You follow on that? Yeah. All right, it's pretty simple. There's nothing complicated about it. Pull it snug, and then do it above again. One, two. And below and all you're doing is putting <clears throat> a gap in between your loop and where the arrow is so when you go to have to replace your loop because you wore it out your knocking height is still the same you're not risking that movement and your loop isn't compressing right down next to your arrow separating your serving because where your loop goes on here when you pull on it it's going to pull the serving apart a little bit if you do that right directly against your arrow it'll start to wear your center serving a lot faster. This makes it last a lot longer. So about that much width is more than adequate. So then you take your knife, cut the tails and leave about that much. And with your fire stick, melt the one side, push it with your tip finger, melt the other side, push it with your finger. And that's your upper soft knot. Now you're gonna do the same thing down there. Yeah, that's probably enough. 
grab your beeswax and just get it all covered with wax. You'll find it's a lot easier to hang on to with your fingers and it sticks to the string when you pull on it. So when you let go of it, you don't lose that knot. Doesn't matter if I have which way. Nope. Start, as right? long as you do it the same, it does not matter which way you go. So one, two, and then in. give it a pull. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Nice. That's great. Pull it. Pull it tight. Oh, oh, you moved it. Okay. okay. Now, now do the same thing underneath. There you go. Keep going, keep going. Give it a good tug. Okay, cool. Do it above. And you're going back that way now. Nice. Below. Okay, do one more above and then we'll stop and cut okay. it off. See, it's not so bad, right? Didn't say it was going to be bad. This is not complicated, right? I can do it. Wait. Well, I would hope so with them glasses. That probably got to look like it's this big right in front of you. <laughs> You're 48 and you'll see what... Well, I'm only four years behind you, sunshine. I didn't and I'm, I'm, I I'm already can't see crap. So, all right. Grab your lighter. Oh, great. So I can blow up my string on camera. Cool. Exactly. That's the whole point. Hang up. All right. Cool. Set so the lighter back down. Now we're going to cut the loop and we're going to use this little cheating gauge of a measuring tape right here for our length. Most loops in a BCY number 24, which is what we have, you're going to want about four and a quarter inches. So there's one, two, three, four. That would be four and a half. So we're going to go right about where the end of my fingers is. I'm just going to cut that. Yep. Okay. Now, you want to flare this out as much as you possibly can. So you just hold it, pinch it, and rub it with your finger. Flare it out, flare it out, flare it out. Okay, you can do the other one. Move your fingers down more and flare it out more than that. There you go. Make it big. So that's what's going to stop you from getting punched in the face. So we don't want to sell that one short. Perfect. That's good. Okay. And then just melt these. Ideally, you try want, want to try to not hit them hard with direct heat, but eventually they'll typically catch fire no matter what. Just hiss more. Yeah. It's not good till it's burnt. Let it cool a second. Touch it with your fingers. If you do this right, it should be really hard to make this loop. Like it should be like, God, if only this thing was like an eighth of an inch shorter. Because the harder this goes on, the shorter your loop ends up being. Mm -hmm. And you always, almost always end up with too long of a loop when you're done. So same thing here. We're going to wax the piss out of it. I'm going to tie the top loop and you're going to tie the bottom loop. Yeah. Okay. So, go around the back, come underneath it, loop it around the back like that, come around the front, and then back through the hole that's, empty, that's there, right up next to your soft knots. You want to get in tight on that just to make sure you can see that. Okay. And then grab your needle nose. I probably should have tied the second one because the second one's way harder to tie. I did cross my mind. <sighs> All right, so now you tie that same loop facing the other direction. So it needs to end up looking like the mirror of it. So you would start on the other side. There you go. Come underneath, go through the hole. 
Now from here with your needle nose, pull it as tight as you can because you're going to need as much slack as you can get. Okay. Go over. Other way. Other way. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Over. And then that's got to go back through. Okay. And everyone's going to complain that I can't see what he's doing, but this is really hard to get a camera angle at and still be able to functionally do not it. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. Not wrong. So, and here's the trick. Ready? So as you're holding that there, you take your needle nose and try to push it through and pop it around it. It's tricky here. Hang on. Come on, you little bugger. The fact that this is hard is good. It means it will not come apart and you've got more than enough ball on there. All right, so now it's in. You can you kind of, as you're pushing on your pliers, you can feel it go pop in. And you stick this guy in here. And if you've done it right, your loop will be pretty short, <clears throat> like that. So now we'll look at your release and the knock. I'm gonna grab your release yeah. so I can still move it up and down a little bit. And to know you have a good knock fit, you should be able to rotate your knock a little bit if you wanna come in here, Jason, really straight on. So I'm gonna rotate this back and forth. You see, I can move the knock back and forth a little bit. That means it's not too tight on the serving. I'm moving the arrow, but it's not moving the string. That means you have a good serving diameter. So, all right, let's see if we can get this in here without touching anything. Now, we probably couldn't get it any closer and not touch, but as long as you're not touching, it won't affect the way the arrow leaves and you're not giving up any draw length. So it'll give you more of an upright face position and a higher peep setting. So that's like, a, personally for me, that's about as perfect length as you can get. Most people can't get them that short. Said. Yeah, I know, right? Sorry. Makes you feel better. Resist. So there you go. All right, so now we're gonna, since Keith's old bow is basically the exact same axle to axle, we're gonna use the length off of that to set his peep height to go with. So that measure right here from the top of the loop to just shy of six inches. From what I hear, that's a good number. I was just trying to be nice for you. I don't want to intimidate you. Well, just shy of six. Feel bad here. So that right there is the same position as that. So that should line up good. We don't need that anymore. Now, I think for doing this peep, I'll do the top half. You do the bottom half, same mm -hmm. thing. All right, we moved over here to hopefully give you a better visual of this. So we'll see. Jason was complaining, so we'd like to keep Jason happy. Mm -hmm. All right, where's our waxy? Just set it down. Good Lord. It's like the same color as the wood. Yeah. Okay. Is it like three feet or so of? Uh, just a couple. You know, that's probably more like, that's probably close to three. Um, better to be too long than too short. Nothing sucks more than getting like three quarters of the way done and you don't have enough serving to finish. So the beginning of this is really simple. You just lay it flat underneath, about mm, quarter inch-ish up from where the string naturally separates with your peep in there and wrap over it. Hold it with your finger for a minute and then get over it about mm, four or five times and you should be able to pull on it, get it snug and then let go of it. You won't have to hold it anymore. And that's four, five. Okay, so I should be able to pull on that and then build it back under. One, two, three, four, five, Six, and you want to go all the way up until the string is no longer naturally separating. So that peep is going to want to stay at that position. So if you don't try to force it out of that position, it should just stay there. So now that we're up to where the gap begins in the, in the string groove, I'm going to cinch on it a little bit, get it tight, and then go up one side. And you got to go through the hole, back around the other end. Bring it all the way down and do it again. Now, if your string is twisted clockwise, like if you look at the end and the string's twisted this direction, that's the same direction you need to run all your serving. So if you tie your serving the other way, it'll naturally try to unspool, Ooh. right? So if this whole thing's going this direction and you're serving, you have to wrap everything the same direction. So don't try to do this the opposite direction or it's gonna cause you grief. It, you'll wonder why your peep 
serving keeps trying to come loose on you. It's because it's running the opposite direction, the string's twisting. Okay, I'm gonna do one more that I'm gonna pull up under the peep. And pull it up under like that, go over the top. There's a groove in the middle of that peep, and that's where you want your serving to go into. You see it in there? It's a little groove. It's all the way around, so you tuck it all the way in there. I like to go around one and a half times, and then come back into here, put it through that direction, and pull it up and under. That's not quite going under, come on. And now you can start doing the same thing down this side. On the opposite side. You were yeah, right. you're doing this side. And the purpose that comes stand this way. You got it? Yep. Keep tension on it. There you go. Tension okay. There. All right, so with one hand you hold tension, the other hand you get the tail. And you're going to put it through this way. There you go. Now grab the tail end, pull it tight, and then let that slowly come out of your hand into there. So I like to kind of hold that. I let it go too quickly. No, you're okay. It's, so since we have it limp, uh, looped under here, it should keep tension on it, other than what you just started with. So now you really just have to keep tension from here down. There you go, that's good, keep going. And I like to keep a little gap in between them, like about oh. that, that's fine, you're good. Just keep going. And then keep going until you get down to about my fingernail. Same thing. If you tied 20 of these on, it would be really easy. It's just one of those things that you have to, like your hands have to learn the movements over and over and over to get it relatively consistently, but you're doing a good job. Uh, one, more? Um, one more? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably give it one more and make sure you're keeping some gap in the next one. And then you should be able to go over the top of the string completely and no longer have to go through the split to finish it. And when Keith forgets how to do this, where can he go to find? Uh, there, I have a video on YouTube of how to tie a peep. I have a video of how I tie loops, that kind of thing. That's all yeah. simple. So, Okay, so now just go over it, just the whole thing. Don't hold it with your fingers like that. Just take the whole thing like that. Oh. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Now wrap about five. I'm trying to keep these tight. Yeah, keep always keep tension on it. You're serving... If you want your serving to not move, you have to tie it tight, so you always have to keep pressure on it the whole time. You can't ever let go of pressure. Well, I meant like... Yeah, touching. Tight. Touching, no gaps. The gaps are only down the sides. You don't have to have it snug down the sides. You just have to keep the tension on the material, but it doesn't have to touch. Okay, how many is that? Mm -hmm. That's got to be about five or six, yeah. Instant replay. Okay, that's enough. So this part is hard Great. to remember, so I'm going to sneak on you here and start you. So just have about that much room in your loop, and you come over to like the end of the serving right there, and grab it and bring it inward towards you and over the top. This is okay. Like that. So it's an opposite direction, and it's kind of weird. So you're doing this about ten times. I'll just go ahead and finish it because it, it's complicated, but that's five, just start, you six, can't stop. seven, eight, eight, it hurts, <laughs> nine, and ten. And now you take this tail, you lay it down here, and as you unwrap it here, it covers it up there, and it comes off of here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then take your tail end and pull on it. slides it all underneath 
looks just like that side. Cut them once again with a little, about a quarter left or so. And burn them. Burn your string in half, Keith. That is how you tie a peep. Sweet. Not too complicated. So now, next thing I'd probably do is put the rest on. So we grabbed a Hamsky Epsilon Matthews Bracket Edition. So you're going to take that. I need you to loosen up those screws probably about six, eight turns. And they're tricky to get to. Might even be easier with like this one. Because it's longer. Because you're going to run into that. Yep. Is that the right one? Or do you need to go down a size? Down size. Okay. Okay. Probably back them off like four turns. Do both of them. See if that's enough. This drops into here. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and tighten them back up. And I want these pretty darn tight, right? Yep. Get them snug. Okay, because of the way this new limb system attaches and that the limbs are beyond a parallel, I'm actually gonna bring this flat for a second so you can see it. I'm gonna just go ahead and tie it like we used to a long time ago. We just looped around it because it can't slide this way, no matter what, and it can't go past there, so it's a pretty easy way to tie this on. I'm just gonna set her in there. Loop around this just like I'm doing a string loop. Same thing, come around here and go back through there. So, cut it, fray it, and melt it, and then cinch it down, and it should stay over on this side so it keeps it as tight in here so we clear the quiver a little better. Okay. Cut that. Where's the lighter? There. Might be due for a new lighter here. Yeah, grab a new one. Thanks, sir. Stick a little bit more of this out. One mountain. Okay, cinch that into here and into there and give it a good tug there you go nice and then since you wanted to change your cord out we're going to take this assembly off here and put that in here and then attach it back up here and while i'm getting this off here you can bolt the rest on because it's direct mount you don't you're going to leave it like that um, let me get this unhooked and you can Take that, that, and that, and screw it on right there. This way? This way. Yes, sir. Yeah. One nice thing about those rests, too, is they're already set for Matthews at 13 16 from the factory, so we don't have to touch the left and right or anything. We should get a relatively close hole if the wheel leans right. So nine times out of 10, we almost never touch the windage, but we wanna make sure we tighten it after we are sure the paper tune's right. 
to make sure it doesn't just move on its own. Okay, we want this down here. Does it matter if this is touching? Oh, uh, when you tighten it down, it should fit oh, snug. Okay. And clear it just barely. And if we need to move it down a little, we can, but we shouldn't have to. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it should just barely clear. Like I said, it's already set it's like up and down, left and right for those bows because they're Matthew's versions. Right, so it's got a Matthews bracket on it, so they already kind of set your up and down, left and right where it should be, which is nice. Almost like they know. Yeah, something like that. Um, something else you could do, you could take, this part's a little, be careful when you do it, but I should have a bridge lock screw to screw into there and start start that, because that needs to go in a little bit before we put a dovetail in it. The pink lighter. Pink lighter, lovely, perfect. That screw right there goes in that hole and make sure it doesn't bind as you're putting it in. So start gentle. I'll keep doing this. One little tip that uh, we were talking about on the Matthews is sometimes these little rubber dampeners come out of here whether it's wet, cold, hot, dirty, dusty, bumping it in something while you're using it. So we're gonna take a little serving and actually tie this rubber dampener above and below to the riser so it can't come out. Uh, we sell a lot of these off our website and it's the same one that goes into the stabilizer that have fallen out because of weather or bumping it. So little, little tip to yourself, a little bit of serving in there, tying it in place to where if it did try to bump out, it couldn't fall all the way out of the bow might save you 40 bucks in the long run, in the middle of your hunt. And it will change the weight and balance of the bow if you lose that. So the bow might not shoot in the exact same position if you take that out at distance. So something to consider. One more way back through here. Voila, and there's your green. Come up through here. Now, another tip we can do for you when we clamp this down is leave you at least five and a half inches of cord and then kind of tie it on here. So if you had to, if you needed to make a new loop, you have enough loop material sitting here to replace your loop. That's just right here. Having said that, I'll be the guy that'll bring an extra with me. Though. Well, that's fine too, but I mean, it's already there. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. And we always want to leave some anyway to grab onto, to pull on when you need to tighten it back down. So if you, leave five and a half inches of it, you have enough to make a loop because it's four and a quarter for a loop and then a little extra to still leave hanging out the tail. Uh, this one. All right, so these can be a little tricky to get on here. Get the first one in. You have to back it out to just the right amount of space. If you don't get it, it's like one thread from being too tight that you can't get it in the cord and then too loose and it falls apart because it's just a nut and a screw. So we got lucky and that was exactly how tight it needs to be. So tighten that down, move it up just a little bit. Oh, come on. Dude, there we go. Keep cinch until it's snug. All right, now I'm gonna cut an extra, at least five inches here. And then you're gonna do like, you're gonna practice your loop all the way down here back and forth. And that's what, what it's gonna keep it on there. So, okay, five and a half. That should be more than enough to do a replacement emergency loop. Take the lighter, melt the end. And then practice the loop knot. Do you remember it? Here, then. Underneath, mm-hmm. And pull it snug and then do it the opposite direct, pull it all the way snug. There is no, uh, no slack. Oh, there you go. To that okay. Yep. Now, then do the other side. So go that way and underneath, and then back in through the hole. Pull it up. Okay, that's what your loop will look like. Now do it again facing the other way. It's just a good little practice. Cinch it up, tie it again the other way. There you go. I'm yeah, this. there Sorry. you go. Yeah, go back. I mean, you have to do something to tie that cord up anyway. You might as well practice. <laughs> I 
and see if you can pull off one more and then we'll melt the end of that. Just enough. Yep. We got got it. All right. Melt her up. I want to like pour the yang out or not really worry about it. Honestly, it doesn't really need to be snug as long as that won't pull back through. So that I'll cut that a little bit. Just a little bit. Leave you about that much. Flare it out a little bit. Go ahead and flare it. There you go. All right. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Good. Okay. There you go. And it's not taking up any space, but you know you have enough to do that right there. And it's still something you can grab onto if you need to pull this down because this may stretch and you may have to readjust it. Okay. Okay. Um, you got your bridge lock screw in there. So let's set this back up. Well, actually, since we're like this, let's put the quiver on. Here, I'll open that up. Keith has chosen to go with the Low Pro two piece from Matthews and a dual track 10 thousandths micro adjustable sight from Black Gold. And we have the appropriate, we weren't sure what bow he was going to pick, so we grabbed every attachment. And somewhere up here is the dovetail to go into the bridge lock. Find that here in a second. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Right in front of my face, like everything else we're using. <laughs> so you thought you were going to keep trying to use the stock grip, right? Yeah, I'll start off with it. I'm going to give it a try before I make changes. Sure. No, that's fair. Fair. One nice thing about the way Black Gold does their stuff is it's really easy to mount this on multiple different platforms. So including the new Bowtech one that's specific, they make a dovetail for that. They make a dovetail for a bridge lock. They make a pick mount for a Hoyt PSE, anybody else using a pick, and they make a good old fashioned direct mount. So you can mount the, any one of their sites to any one of those platforms with the appropriate piece. So on how you're going to take this off, let's do that first. So take that screw out of there. That's your mountain screw. You probably need the biggest one, but I'm not sure if it's the biggest or the second, because I can't remember. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and take this bridge lock stabilizer that you're going to use and put the little bridge lock screw in here. Keith wanted to try the bow without a V-bar at first and see if it balanced well for him. And if it doesn't quite work out the way he likes it, he'll add a V-bar later, but we're starting without it. So you got that all the way off yet? Okay, so this sits right over here. And this is what we want to look at is... That's plenty of room to clear your arrow here. So we don't need that spacer. Remember I grabbed that spacer in case oh, we yeah. needed it. So all you're gonna do is put the screw through that, through there. So get down low, get down on your knees, baby. Or not. <laughs> hey, you gotta get it in straight. <laughs> you gotta get down there. It's so much bigger than I thought it'd be. <laughs> there you go, that's a good bite, that feels good. Now, they do also make the one-piece quiver for this, which I know is really popular, but Keith doesn't want to take his quiver off. So there's really no point in spending another $50 and adding more weight to your bow if you're never going to take it off, which I also don't ever want to take my quiver off. I want to balance my bow with my quiver and my arrows on it. So same thing there. Take the screw out, and we're going to set it in there and do the same thing. I'll hold it from the top, and you can tighten it from the bottom. Here, let me make it a little easier for you. How about that? Yeah, they cut so much aluminum out of this riser that you don't even see the existing quiver holes. I had to call them. I was like, hey, is this wrong? I'm like, what the heck? I don't even see a mounting hole in here anymore. And it is, it's just they took all the extra mass around it other than what it was necessary to get it snug onto here, literally. So, and that should clear that when we draw it back. Because if you look at how tight these are, that's part yeah, of why they're so cool. Really tight. Like, I can probably point it up to where you can see it there. Like, if you look at the line of that, like, this limb literally comes down and almost touches the quiver when you pull it back. 
It's just what's, they did such a good job of making these things as snug and as tight to, the, to their bows as possible. But that's also why you can't use any other sights or any other rests. Like nothing clears. You go to stick an arrow in here and it's touching. In fact, there's a good chance we'll try it and see if you might have to have one arrow that you pull first because it gets so close to this, it might touch it because it's so tight. We'll have to check yours and see. Like that one might be our culprit, and that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But it doesn't touch, you're okay. This one might. And that's this one. Nope, looks okay. So that's that right there. That's the arrow you're gonna wanna pull out of your quiver first so okay. it doesn't touch here. All the rest of them clear. If that bothers you, if that like bothers you a lot that you don't wanna have to do that, we can put the spacer under here and it'll move it out enough that it won't touch, but you're adding more weight and you're pulling more weight farther away from the bow. So as yeah, long as you're balance. good with that, that's what I would do. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah. I'm used to doing it the, the weight one anyway. Cool, all right, so there's that. We can slide our bridgey lock in here. And when you put it in your case, you can have it all the way down like that and run it out as long as you want. And there's a little indents in it all the way up and down. And so you just put it in until you feel it touch and then back it off a little bit and you should feel a when you hit an indent it gets loose and you tighten down on that indent it's really important that when you snug this down you are snugging this down on an indent if you don't it'll vibrate loose and that's about the only negative i can give you to this system when you go to snug it down you have to make sure you snug it down on an indent or you'll put like five arrows to it and it'll start to chatter right and, okay. and then when you want to loosen it up slide it in good to go all right, let's uh, bridge lock your sight here and get it level. So we're gonna take apart a black gold and show you how to do this so you understand the internal workings in here. This is what is something that makes them unique to the others, is that the internal components stay rigid to the bracket. So you can disassemble this thing, put it back together and your rail will still be square because there's a screw in here that holds the left and right in place. And it also lets you micro adjust it. So we're going to take these all the way out. Pull that one. Okay. That little fella right there is threaded in and held in by there and it drops into the rail. So you can take this off, put it back on, and it will still have your rail the same level, which is cool. So we need to take those two screws out. So just back those two out, and then we're gonna put that on this dovetail. Yep. I thought you had the right one, maybe I was wrong. Nope, yeah. Okay, so give me that. We don't need that anymore. Now, when you bridge lock them, you have to move it all the way this way or almost all the way this way, if I remember right. So let me see that real quick. The indent always has to stay down like you had it. So we're gonna move into these. I wanna say it's not all the way, it's the second most, if I remember right. That fits the windage the best, so you have the most amount of left to right adjustment when it's done correctly. Okay. So you screw that into there. <clears throat> I don't think that is the right screw, dude. Yeah, if it's just tight, you had the wrong one. When you had originally was the right size. You just need to spit on it. Talk a little nicer. <laughs> okay, so we want to optimize our adjustment, right? So we want to have this up as high in the bracket as we can. If you look underneath here, there's just a crap ton of holes. And there's screws in certain spots that are mounting internal pieces to external pieces. But what you're looking for here is the highest position here and the indent right there. And that's where you put your screws. That gets you the most amount of travel out of the site. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to move this site all the way down until it would run into the path of your arrow. 
If you started up much higher than that, you might be able to max out the site and still have a gap. So you wouldn't be able to shoot as far. That's what it boils down to. You'd run out of range. Not super snug, because we're just going to adjust it with a level anyway. Okay, so now come on to this side, Keith. So there's indents in here too, and it's all where you want your site to line up in those indents. Now, as soon as you get into here, you're like pushing the rubber in there, and you can if you want. But this little four inches, typically most people run it about like that. I would probably go in like that because I like to bring my side in as much as I can. Yeah. It increases your range of shooting, and when you torque your bow, you tend not to miss by as much. So you good with that? Of course. Okay. So the same thing, just like your bridge lock, when you have indents, you gotta screw this in till you feel it, like touch it, and then back it off just a little bit and see if you're in the indent or not. Like that's touching. So I'm gonna back it off and try to move this a little bit back and forth. There it goes. Ooh. Where are you? Come on. That's an indent. I don't know if I can get into that other one. No, I can. That's right there. Yep, that's that one. So, and if you get it to where it's a little loose, and if you watch the dovetail and you go to tighten it down, you'll see it like move a little bit, and that's sinking into the, the position of the first hole or the second hole. All right, now we need to put some levels on this thing. So we're gonna do our two-way string level. And you're going to adjust this to where the bubbles read level. Okay, a little too far that way. So a lot of times you'll have to come to one side of it like that. And when you tighten it down and let go of it, it'll fall a little. And now we're right in between the lines. See in both ways? Yep. Okay. So my Gen 2 got broke the other day, so we had to go grab another one down at the shop. It's kind of nice having all that right next door, let me tell you. So you clamp that on your rail, that's the part that moves up and down. Yep. So that's gotta match that. Now take a look at it. Yeah, negative. No matchy. All right, so how you adjust that is these screws can't be tight. They can be a little snug, but they can't be tight. And that's why I didn't tighten them up all the way. And that little screw in the side right here, which you might wanna come around this way to look at this as well. You twist this screw and it drives the rail. And then I'll move it left or move it right so that lines up with that. So you're gonna use your, I think it's your smallest one in here. I can't remember if it's the second smallest or the smallest, it's that one. Okay. So here you go. And just stick it in there and turn it slowly. Way too snug on the base, here hang on. That's where these little stubby ones come in real handy. Because you can still get in here without taking it off. All right, try it again. Which way do you want me to turn, right or left? Um, hang on a second. It's like this. So I want you to Gotta turn it clock, clockwise. There you go, stop. That was fast. I went too uh, far, didn't I? No, you're not oh, quite oh. there. A tiny bit more. Keep going. Where are you maxed out? I think I'm maxed out. Yeah, these usually go one way pretty close to max. I remember right. That's string side. So that looks like identical to that one. See that? Yep. Touching on the side, touching on the side. That's yep. good. So we're going to snug this back down now a lot because we don't want this to move now after this. Now, the only other thing you have to do once you get this thing squared. And this part's kind of a little bit of a bugger, but you got to make that one look like this one. So you loosen those two screws and it just turns. Mm -hmm. You said the lighting's right in my eyes. Can you find me the right one? Okay, so what I like to do with that is just pop it loose and just pop it loose a little bit to where there's still a little tension on it, and then I kind of push on the ring a little bit with my wrench to move it. See how it's still kind of holding itself a little bit? Yep. 
and that's pretty close. We want to come up maybe a little bit. Oh, too much. This is where it gets really finicky because you just don't need here. Actually, do you want to shoot from this side so you can see the bubble? Come to me, Keith. So you can just kind of push on this a little bit. And a tiny bit more. Tiny bit more. And if there's a little tension on it, you don't have to hold it. So a little too far. Again, you'll probably do this about four or five times till it stops where you want it to. Oh, damn it. Too much. Touch it. Let it go. And this one is slightly touching right, or touching left, and touching left. Do those look the same to you? Like the same on a cut and everything? I don't think you're going to get closer than that. All right. So now you got them. Tighten them down. There you go. Levels are set. We need to run this thing through paper and um, see what our tear looks like. And then if we need to do a top hat. And then from there, it's let's get you on at 20. Go ahead. I'll look down the pipe and make sure you're okay height-wise. Well, just left to right-wise, you want to make sure you're hitting the bail. Okay, so we probably want to take a step this direction. There you go. All right, and point to your left a little bit. There you go. A little more to your left. There you go. Uh, yeah, you're good. Go ahead and make a good, clean shot. Okay, so we have a left to right tear, which means we're going to need to move some top hats. Go. Go. And I'll line up your height. Okay. Okay. Uh, up a little higher. Just a little. There you go. And maybe a little left. Just tiny. Okay, somewhere in there should be fine. Okay, so went from that to that. Like magic! Okay. Probably need to uh, play with that timing just a little bit because you have a slight knock height, but we know we're not knock high, so we are probably going to play with that timing just a little bit. All right. The tricky part in all of this, are you still recording? Yeah. Dude, yeah, turn this way. So the tricky part in trying to find the right peep size, and I still struggle with it a lot when I'm building a new bow for myself, is every different time of day, it's going to look different. Like if you try to check it right now, it's going to look as small as it's going to look, which mind you folks, it's like one o'clock or 1230 or something like that. So when you go back and check it again at four o'clock, which is getting dark at like 430 now, it's going to look way bigger because there's less available light. You check it inside, it's going to look bigger. You immediately walk outside on a bright day, it's going to look smaller. So trying to find the right size of peep is actually really freaking hard. It's very difficult, but we'll play with it a little more, check it outside. But if we can get it to just barely frame right now, like I can see around it, but I maybe can't see any daylight, that's probably perfect. Because if you're setting it at like midday, you don't want any daylight around it. You want to just be able to see the color and nothing else. Because as soon as that daylight starts to fade, the peep's going to look bigger. Well, that's where I'm at. Cool. All right, so we're going to play with time in here a little bit. I want to say I thought this one was hitting on top just a little bit first. But it's not enough to do a twist, so um, we're going to do something else here. We're going to do the cord. Cord and the cable. Yeah, the cord and the cable. Hot dog in the hallway. Whatever you got to do to make it right, man. Go. It's about as small as it's going to get. Decorative. Left to right. Up, up, good, wherever you're comfortable. Okay. 
Okay, your height's back down. Point's good. Fabulous. Sweet. I just got to get a sight tape on it and side her in. Cool. Woohoo! Still very light, with, even with everything on here. Yeah, and you've got all the weights on the front that come with it, too. You can take it off if it feels too front heavy. No, it doesn't. It's so, yeah, it's just balanced really well. It is. I, they, they did a really good job. I mean, there's, there's a lot of haters that are going to hate the fact that they're probably making the nicest bow this year, but maybe you ought to deal with the fact that they're probably making the nicest bow this year. Just a thought. So, comment down below on what you think about this video, and if you want to see a longer axle-to-axle -axle version of this, as well as our bow of the year video that we did prior to this, Thank Keith for making the trek over here. It's about five hours away, but he's a buddy, and it was nice to spend some time with him and went out to dinner last night and had a good time hanging out. And he learned a little bit about how to put his bow together and how to work on his bow, tie his own loop, tie his own peep. And the next time he needs that done, I'm going to say, did you do it yourself first? And if you haven't, That's why it's we'll walk up. you through it. That's why it's <laughs> messed up. So anyway, thanks for following along, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll keep them coming. Appreciate all the support and the growth we've had in the past two months is pretty incredible. And that's because of you guys. Like and subscribe. Keep following along. Thanks a lot.